Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EasyAutomation.com. Welcome to another video of our test project course. And this video we'll be talking about working with add-ons and this time we are going to create runners. Well, runners are more like unit testing code which helps the add-on developers to test their add-ons in local machine. If you remember in our previous video, we were creating an add-on but we need to test the add-on and see how it works within our local machine. We cannot just upload the jar file in the test project and then we can see how the code basically works because it's not going to be really a very easy option and it's not even verbose because it's not going to be throwing all the exceptions that we are expecting for. So let's quickly see everything in action of working with runners and understand how things work. So for that I'm going to flip to IntelliJ IDE. Alright, so in our previous video we saw how we can create this particular add-ons but we also need to execute this code and see how it basically works. So for working with this particular add-on in order to test within our local machine we're going to use this runners but in order to work with runners we are going to make use of what is called as our local test project agent. So our local test project agent is basically running in my local machine as you name it. I'm going to start the test agent right now and then I'm going to connect this test agent and then I will see how we can run the same code within our local machine. So for creating and working with runner I'm going to first create a very very super simple Java file this time and I'm going to call this runner as what is called as an action runner because it's going to be calling this particular action class and then it's going to be a runner so why not just call this as an action runner. So I'm going to call that and this class is going to be more like a simple Java class file. So I'm just going to have what is called as a public static void main. So this is going to have a main method which means this is a starting point of our class to be executing all the methods that we just wrote. So before working with this particular add-on we also need to specify the browser and then we need to initiate this particular driver right. So in order to set up the browser we are going to make use of what is called as a driver settings. So you can see this particular driver setting class is from test project. So I'm just going to include that and I'm going to call this as driver settings is equal to new driver settings. Well this particular class if you could see here if I navigate to this particular class you can see it has parameter something like driver type. So if you see what is driver type you can see it supports different driver types for us. Something like Safari, Chrome, Firefox, Marionette, Internet Explorer, Edge, Opera and then the Android, Chrome, Android, iOS, iOS Safari, Cylindroid and iOS driver. Oh my god that's all of these drivers which is available on the planet right now. So it includes everything for us. So I'm just going to include the driver type and this time I'm going to include the driver type as Chrome browser which is going to be my favorite browser today and then I'm going to run this particular test on the runner. So I'm just going to call the try of runner so you can see this runner is basically from the test project so I'm going to call that runner here. Runner is equal to new of runner but this runner asks us to include what is called as a token. So if you go to this particular uh, constructor of this particular runner, so let me go over here. It asks us to include the developer token and then the driver setting. So now you can ask me what is this particular developer token and where do I get this particular developer token? And now comes our developer token that we were talking all these days in our past two videos. This one, the developer key. So we need to include this particular developer key from here. So I'm just going to copy this developer token from here and then I'm going to paste it into my class file. So if I go all the way to the action runner here and then I'm going to create a private final static string of dev token. There you go. So this is my token that I'm going to be including. So as that said we are going to pass the dev token here and then the driver settings, right? So this satisfies our runner's constructor right now. Cool, right? So once everything is done, 
we are then going to call our click menu link action that we wrote in our previous video. So I'm going to call this click menu link action, which is going to be, why not just call this as click menu link is equal to new of click menu links. And then I'm going to call this web driver driver is equal to runner dot get driver. So you can see that I'm calling the runner this time. And within this runner dot get driver, I'm going to include this click menu link as well, because this is where I'm going to pass the reference for our driver within this particular add on. Right. So once everything is done and then I'm just going to navigate to our ea.somi.com, which is nothing but the I'm gonna Copy that. I'm going to paste it over here. And once I navigate there and then I'm going to perform the click operation there. So I'm going to do this. Click all the hyperlinks. So you can see that I'm not even logging in this time. I'm just going to click all the menus which is available before logging into this particular uh, application. So you can see if I just do a log off and if I navigate to the eaapp.somi.com, I have one, two, three, four, five links, right? So I'm just going to navigate over there. So let's see if I could able to click all the uh, menus of menu items of the menu. So I'm now going to call this particular click menu link action. So for that, I'm just going to do this runner dot run. So this guy, the run method is basically going to run our what is called as this particular add on. So now you can ask me, why do I call this particular run or how does it behaves in my code? So basically, while you call this particular add on within your test project, you don't necessarily call your add on within your step using any code, right? You're going to do everything from the user interface. So uh, if I go over here to the home and then if I go to the exit automation test and this particular test case over here as an action, you can see you're going to basically call this particular add-ons from here. So once you call it, your test step is going to execute that for you, right? You are not going to be calling that from elsewhere. But in our unit testing case, you are going to invoke this particular add-on yourself. So in order to do that, you have to call this runner.run method so that you can invoke this particular add-on. So this is the reason we are calling this using this run method, but it is going to be taken care of automatically by passing all the driver settings and developer tokens and all those jazz within the portal by itself for you. So you don't really have to worry about all these things. All these magics are going to happen for you behind the scenes, right? So I'm just going to save this particular code and let's quickly run this code and see what's really going to happen. Basically, I have not tested this code so far. We have been writing this code from our previous video. So let's try to run this. So you can see that it is starting the development environment session for us right now. And oops, it has started the browser in a different browser, uh, different monitor for me. And you can see that the test has started and you can see that it is basically clicking all the hyperlinks on the menu and the test card completed right now. And you can see that the test has got successfully connected to our local agent with this particular port number. And also it could able to run the test in our local browser this time, not even talking to the test project cloud. And it could able to successfully execute our test. Very, very cool. So fast and so easy for us this time. You can see that it's all happening because of this particular dev token as well. So for instance, if I just try to delete this particular dev token, just try to scramble this guy. And if I try to run this particular test, you can see that this time the test is basically going to fail, as you can see here, because the token is not valid and it cannot instantiate the uh, the driver for us because this particular dev token is basically wrong, right? So the dev token should be correct so that it can able to communicate with our local test project agent. So this is how you can see that it is basically working seamlessly to see how we can run our add-on that we created in our local machine and we can unit test the add-on within our local machine. Very, very cool, pretty straightforward. 
So now that we have seen how the course is actually working and how we can unit test in our local machine and now that we have developed our add-ons. The next final thing we need to do is to upload this particular add-on within our test project so that we can reuse that within our existing test cases because this is not what we are actually looking for, right? This is just to unit test the add-on but we have to make use of the add-on within our test project's test case. So if I go to this particular Maven project option over here that you can see, you can do this particular clean so that it will clean the target folder for you. And then you can do a compile so that you can see that there is a, there's going to be a new target folder going to be created for you, which means it's trying to compile the whole project. You can see that it has been created. And then you can run this package goal so that it is going to create a jar file for you. So you can see that basically it is going to create all the necessary uh, jar files. I guess it is created. So if I go to this particular target folder, show in Explorer, and if I navigate to the target folder, you can see that we have this particular test project add-on that we just created. I guess this jar file is almost fine for us. So I can just upload this particular jar file and then I can start using that within our test project test case that we already have. Right. So for doing that, I'm going to go back to my add-on once again. And then I am going to go back to the click menu link here. And this time we are going to upload our jar file, which is going to be from the target folder. And this is the uh, jar file that we're going to upload. So I'm going to hit this upload file here. You can see that it's super simple. If you have all the necessary descriptor files and all the required files, which is specified by the test project team, then it is going to automatically upload things for you. If not, it's going to throw you an error and it will tell you that you need to fix the issues there before you can start working with it. So it's going to ask you for the description. You can say that uh, click all the menus from the navigation bar and then you can also give the source code link if you're going to share that and then you can also share the documentation link and then you're going to give the label here so it's more like a uh, menu click uh, so i'm just going to give that as well and then i'm going to hit finish and the platform it's going to support is going to be for the web very intelligent enough it has already recognized that for us so i'm going to hit finish there you go so this is our add-on that we have developed right now so you can also share this add-on to your community if you want but i know this is not going to be very compatible with any one of the community code so it's very very specific to our test case so I'm not going to share this code ever to community. And then I'm going to go back to the exit automation test case. And this time I'm just going to see if this code basically works in my local uh, test cases. So even before all these options are going to happen, I'm just going to navigate to the application. And then I'm just going to see if I could able to click all the hyperlinks. So I'm just going to uncheck all these options so that I'm going to disable them completely. And I'm just going to call a new step this time. And I'm going to call this element as, uh, as an action. And the action is going to be the click menu links, this one, right? So it's from the add-ons that you can see from here. So I'm going to choose that. And you can see that run click menu links. It's going to create a stuff for us. I'm going to hit create. So I'm just going to drag this guy and I'm going to put it over here. And now I'm just going to run this code and see how it basically works. Super simple. So I'm going to do a start recording. So as you do that, you know that it's going to create a new instance of the Chrome browser for us. So that it's going to prepare all the necessary instances and then it's going to start running the test for us. All right, it has been loaded. And now I'm going to hit this run and I'm going to see the magics of my own custom add-ons. So you can see that the application has been loaded and it is clicking all the hyperlinks super fast than my local machine. I could see that it has clicked really, really fast. And you can see that. Let me replay it again. So you can see it has loaded and it's going to click all the hyperlinks for me really, really faster. Super cool. So this is how you can create a custom add-on and you can upload the custom add-on within your account and then you can reuse the add-on within your code and see how it can be used. Very, very super simple, straightforward code. In our next video, we are going to make use of page object models to see how we can automate these options and then click the hyperlinks within
the application and extend the existing code that we have in much greater detail. So that's it guys. Once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.